everybody and welcome to World 101 Podcast. Choose your fighter. I am your host this evening, Mr. Eddie V. Joining me, his first showing, if you guys did not check out uh, MVC Book Club, where we talked about Hell, uh, Hollow Knight, I'm about to say Hellblade again, <laughs> Hollow Knight, <laughs> uh, you kind of missed our guest. Uh, everybody, please welcome Joshua. He is going to be one of the members of World One One Podcast. Uh, hello, Joshua. Hello, how are you? I am doing great. Uh, would you like to give everybody an introduction, uh, a little history or something about yourself? Okay. Um, my name is Josh. I've uh, been a gamer all my life, literally, um, since I was about five. So uh, my dad actually got a Atari 2600 in the garbage, and that's how I first started playing video games. So I like, um, so that's just where it started. And from there, just went to the Nintendo, went to everything else and ended up here. All right. Yes. Well, everybody, we're going to get into what we actually been playing. Um, Josh, what you, what you been playing? I've been playing a lot of Dragalia Lost, which is the new mobile Nintendo game. Yes. I don't know if you played that yet. It's I haven't, really good. I haven't played it yet. I have been seeing people going crazy about it. They were just like, this is really good. Yeah, it's really, really good, actually. Um, it's. I think it's only available for iOS right now. No, iOS they're, devices, they're, Apple. They're, they're both out. It's for iOS Are and they? Android. Okay. Yeah. okay, good. So, yeah, I mean, I, I played on my uh, iPhone and my iPad. And um, you get a lot for free content in that. Ooh. I was wondering where, the, where they're charging or was it going to be free to play? It's free to start, but I have not played one penny yet. And uh, I played for about 15 hours so far. So, I um, mean, I, I, I don't know when it's going to tell me, you know, you got to pay to go on or what, mm-hmm. but it hasn't done that yet. And I, I know that it it was just like you do pay for some things, but you pay for it uh, like um, like cosmetics or something, and right? Maybe like little currencies or like extra things if you if in case if you need it. Um, because I know they talked more about that in that um, in the Nintendo Direct or in the Mobile Direct, I should say. Um, which is weird, not they did that they're separating it. Like it's the Indie Direct, it's the Nindy Direct, Nintendo Direct, and then it's the uh, Mobile Direct. <laughs> no, I agree. It, they're all games, so they should all be together, in my opinion. But um, I understand where they're trying to get different audiences mm-hmm. for different things. So, yes, I mean we all call it like the Direct series, um, but we just generalize everything as the Nintendo Direct because that's what we know. Uh, that's kind of what we know ever since Iwata and them started start doing it. So, um, but is there any, anything else? Um, I did some. I'm doing some retro gaming. I did some pickups. I got uh, some GameCube games, some really yes. bad GameCube games, but uh, for pretty cheap. I've got uh, I got a uh, Chronicles of Narnia. I don't know if you've actually played that. Um, of fanti- oh, is, is that the movie? No. Yeah, it's the movie kind of tie-in game. It's terrible, but it's fun, so I like it. Uh, I also got a um, Beyblade V-Force, which is a kind of an RPG kind of tournament battle game. Uh-huh. It's It was given a 2.5 rating on IGN out of 10 <laughs> back in the day when it came out. So I haven't really played it too much, but... I got a couple other games, too. I have one game um, that I don't have a peripheral for, for my GameCube. I need a microphone for it, so I forgot that. Uh, Odama? So I, um, Odama, it? yep. Oh, yep. the jealousy that I feel for you right now <laughs> that I have. <laughs> I, I haven't played Odama, but I respect it for what it is. Uh, it's right. like a simulation pinball game that you control giving commands with your voice. Right, uh, right. And it wasn't the best, but Sega took a risk, and everybody pretty much like dug this game. Yeah, for when it came out, it was revolutionary. Really, I mean, no one had ever done anything 
that controlled anything with your voice before, like quite like this. So it was kind of interesting for me to put it in, then realizing I don't have the microphone, so I'm going to have to buy that. It's only like eight, eight to ten bucks on eBay, so I think I'll just buy it. Oh, nice. Uh, I remember uh, Konami did the same thing called Lifeline uh, for PS2. We was in a spaceship, and uh, it's like a survival horror game, and you gave commands to the microphone, but the character never reacted. So you kind of had to say, like, phrases and words and stuff, and it just never worked. Right, right. Um, and the only other thing I'm playing is I just um, continue to play Hollow Knight a little bit. I got to get back into that and just continue my quest to get through. I got through it, mm-hmm. got through the game, but I really want to find everything Larry talked about a bunch of stuff I never saw. So I really do want to see all that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Polygon has the uh, best of 12, like, Metroidvania games, like, indie ones. And Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight is on it. Uh, and one of my friends, like, tweeted out, like, because it's uh, the creator who did Axon Verge. We interviewed him on World War One, um, And... You know, his, his game is number one. And so I messaged him. I was just like, I feel like Hollow Knight is more, and now that I'm thinking of it, not Symphony of the Night, it's more Simon's Quest. In a sense. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I, I do see you on that, where you get to that. I agree with you. Um, for me, it was just more, it reminded me a lot more of Symphony of the Night. I didn't really yeah. think about other games in that series but I, I can see where you come to that conclusion yeah I mean I was I was thinking I would agree with you I was thinking of Cynthia the night but then like Simon's Quest came into my and I'm like I forgot Konami did that first before Metrovania got uh, 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 turned into a co- uh, coined as a term I should say and people don't realize that a lot of people don't realize it Oh yeah, Metro, uh, Simon's Quest. It just didn't have like the map stuff like Metroid did, right? Like the original one. Um, and because uh, Simon's Quest is such a odd game, it still follows the path of a Metroidvania uh, style. It's just no one thought about it at that time. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Or- um, no, not really. That's about it for, for right now. Okay. Uh, for me, um, I, uh, finished Quantum Break, uh, got the end, um, and really did enjoy that game. Um, I'm kind of replaying it again to, uh, there's some more stuff that I need to unlock, but I'm playing it on easy so I could do the collectibles and make different choices. I think I'm going to go gotcha. back. To, yeah. I think I'm going to try to hundred percent that game. Re- once again, really nice production. Uh, from what, what did you play it on? Did you play it on hard? I played it on normal. Normal, okay. Yeah, and what's good is that if you beat it on normal, you get the achievement from the casual difficulty and the normal right. difficulty. Right. So everything stacks. Yeah. Yeah. Only reason why I didn't play it on hard uh, is because this was like my first playthrough, and I right. just wanted to like experience the game, try to get it off my backlog list. And, uh, but like doing it on easy, I'm doing it just for the collectibles and stuff. Cause if you literally took out, if you take out the, uh, if, if you take out the TV parts of it and you kind of make your own, make decisions like on the fly, like real quick, um, you probably could beat the game if you're dealing, if you're not frustrated by the last boss, you could probably beat the game within six to seven hours. It's not yeah, I too agree. long. Um, there are problems with it, um, with some of the camera angles and directions on that you need to go. Um, but when you figure it out, you'll be like, okay, I got it. I need to use this power or I'm like, I don't know if that, okay, this is the way to go. Cause sometimes some stuff is not clear, um, about it, but yeah, I'm trying, I'll, I'll probably return back to that. Um, and you know, go through it easy. And just, like I said, trying to collect them. Um, play uh, Forza Horizon 4 for review for NGR Radio and I really like this game I'm really having fun uh, I haven't I bought it, it seems that I could buy uh, what they offer me and then tune it um, I 
thought they would offer more options and they don't. And that might be kind of problematic for me. Uh, but I still need to fool around with the twenty thing. I love the customization. Um, I brought some new cars. Um, a lot of my races, I've been coming in like 11th or 12th place. I came in first about one or twice. Um, I raced the train and I raced like, <laughs> Uh, uh, like not a subwoofer. I think it's a subwoofer. It's some kind of boat that they show in the trailer that you actually get. The okay. Race. Um, so I, I raced that, and what kind of what I liked about it is that regardless of where you place at, other stuff, the game continues to progress and opens. So you know you, you could just you could go back and redo those races to get a first place if you want more credits and stuff. Uh, but pretty much when you when you just do a race and open stuff up, you'll get an achievement because of you did it. So it doesn't hold you to get a first place in everything. You just need to do the race. Whether you're good or bad or anything, uh, it's up to you on how you want to go about it. And I, I, I love that about this game. So I, I've been doing that on Xbox One. Um, haven't played anything on PS4 for a bit yet. Uh, but I will be getting back to that uh, Switch. Played a little bit of more Dead Cells. Um, uh, played a little bit of... Uh, was about to start playing Breath of the Wild. Um, but it didn't get a chance to do it. Um, played some more Octopath Traveler. Uh, getting through some Chapter 2 stuff. Like literally returning to that game. And soon I'll be jumping back to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Because I need to finish it. Um and things like that uh but that's pretty much what i've been playing oh i forgot i also played phoenix right uh i mean professor Layden versus phoenix right i just finished that game so i really enjoyed that really had that uh, a really good time with that i know it's kind of been years that i had the game since it's just been out but uh i there was with me i jump around from game to game um last but not least did plays puzzle uh puzzle and dragons um and played the still play. I'm on the second world of Super Mario Brothers, so I played that. Um, other than that, uh, hopefully, when I do get to PS4, I want to start back up Neo. I started that game, but I didn't uh, continue forward with it. But I can't wait to get back to it. Um, it to me, Neo is better than Bloodborne. Like okay. I love the fast action in this game, um, and it has its difficulty parts. Uh, but I, I kind of prefer Neo style because it's quick. You know, it gives you a fair chance and stuff. So can't wait, really can't wait to jump back into that. But uh, that's pretty much what we've been playing. We're going to be getting into our news. So uh, thanks to Josh, he put out some stories for us to check out. Uh, and our first one is that PS4 name changes are coming in early 2019. Um, the story uh, is coming to coming from Polygon. Uh, the feature is compatible with PS4 games originally published after April 1st, 2018, and a large majority of the most played PS4 games that were released before this date. However, please note not all games and applications for PS4, PS3, and PS Vita systems are guaranteed to support the online ID change, and users may occasionally encounter your ID. You can revert back to your original ID for free at any time. Uh, and that's if you're having issues experiencing it. Uh, you will only be able to revert once during the preview program. Reverting back to an old ID will resolve most issues caused by the ID change. In addition, when this feature officially launches, a list of compatible games be, uh, published before uh, April 1st, 2018 will be provided on PlayStation.com for reference before you make a change. Um, the first name change is free for everybody, and after that is $9.99, and if you are a uh, PS Plus member, it will be $4.99. Now, pretty much everybody is probably going to be a PS Plus. PSP plus uh, PS plus member um, because in in order to even play games online like multiplayer you have to have it right so uh, pretty much people probably will be doing it for the four ninety nine I I'm keeping mine I'm not <laughs> changing mine uh, I think people are still going to be making non cynical names and everything so when they do. Hey, it is going to be what it is. Uh, but what are your thoughts on it? I mean, this is really for... 
I mean, this is for that person. You know, you got a PS3 when you were 10 years old and you thought you were being fun and you ma- named yourself, you know, Bong Ripper 69. And now you're stuck with that and you've been stuck with that for 10 years. So everybody knows you by that. And you're just like, for the love of God, let me change my name. And the, and the thing about it is Sony always said that, are you sure this is the name that you want? Right. So when you finalized it for the first time, you should have known that they weren't going to let it change. No, I agree. I mean, you should have known. But, you know, kids and people don't don't think that. And plus... Xbox has always allowed name changes. Yes. So everybody is saying, oh, they do it. Why can't you? So in the way that I have been told from a lot of people is that this is something in the actual code for PlayStation, the PlayStation Network. It's not as easy as just allowing you to change your name. Yes. So yeah, trophies are tied to your name. Everything is tied to your name. Your digital purchases are tied to your name. So that's... That's been the big hang up. Yeah. Well, I, we're kind of, I know people are happy that this is happening. And it's, it's kind of, in a way, set the future for Sony in a sense. Because with Crossplay being in this preview program, uh, this coming to the preview program, I think they're trying to get things right before PlayStation 5. Because if they don't do anything with this uh, before PlayStation 5 comes out, that's going to hurt sales for that system. No, I, I, I totally agree. Also, obviously, anything going forward is going to work with this. So, I mean, how many people are really going to be playing PlayStation 3 games, Vita games, everything else going back? As we go forward, there's going to be less and less of those people. So I know that that's you know, part of their reasoning on this, too. So, Yeah. I, Sony's trying to gain momentum. In a sense, and momentum as in being talked about, because you really don't talk. You can't admit that God of War created a discussion, Spider Man created a discussion. What are we talking about now? You know, of course, Black Ops is going to be like a big discussion, but like for Sony themselves, they had those two high peaks, and then it just went away. Where people are still talking about Microsoft in uh, various ways, and of course, Nintendo with Switch and stuff is being talked throughout pretty much almost every week. Uh, you know, there's something Nintendo related always talking about, whether it's positive or neg- negative. There's always something that people are looking forward to, like limited run games announcing something, an indie game coming out for Switch. Maybe a review coming out, you know, Mario Party, Super Mario Party. Just like uh, there's a continuation, continuation for talk for Nintendo. And since Sony is not getting that, this is a good, this is a good thing for them. I think this is a win for them. Now we'll see what happens in the by next year. What happens? But hopefully that it comes out right um, and people really take advantage to get their name right. Do not pussyfoot around. <laughs> Do not make it comical and, and make it feel regrettable. Because don't forget, you're going to have to pay to get that fix. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is a real thing. I mean, if you want your name changed, um, you're going to get the first one for free. So make sure you name it. You know, you change it to what you want and leave it at that. Don't be every week. I'm going to change my name. And if you are, you're going to pay for it. Exactly. If you got money to burn and give it to Sony, go right ahead. Not I. <laughs> so, uh, but we're going to move on to the next story. Uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead final season will be finished. Uh, Robert Kirkman announced that the final episode of Telltale Games, The Walking Dead, the final season, will be released via his company Skybound during the Walking Dead panel at New York Comic Con on Saturday that he announced it. And this came from um, IGN. Um, a lot of people are happy, but they don't know if they'll be able to get all the members from Telltale uh, to work on it. Uh, but we do know that Skybound will be working on it to get it out. Um, so... I know people still have their heart feelings for it. Um, I'm still waiting for more information about the uh, one person suing Telltale about it. Um, right. Like the severance pay and the labor right. uh, work loss. Um, so we should see how that uh, plays out. 
hopefully people do buy um hopefully people do buy the third and fourth but if they pay the season pass hopefully they'll be able to get everything uh, for it um i i personally feel that skybound should add a fifth episode like a like an epilogue epilogue concluding everything like uh you know showing the the storyline from one two and three and then with four being the end with the fifth episode being the ending like like wrap it up and stuff uh, like but, like the other two seasons have yes okay are you playing this this season of the I, walking dead yet i am i am not okay uh, so i'm not either so i mean i don't know how the story is going uh i was actually going to pick this up before the news of the telltale shutdown mm-hmm. happened and i just thought well now i'm not going to buy it i'm just going to wait and see what happens to me, this is good news. We're going to get a resolution to this story. Yes. I just wonder, um, are they getting around paying these, you know, people? You know, these are real people that, you know, they lost their jobs. So hopefully that the people at Telltale will be placed somewhere. And a lot of them will get at least some kind of work with this. Uh, it's just it's just sad kind of that mm-hmm. this is how it happened. You know, it's like all of a sudden... I read a story where one of the guys that just got hired at Telltale two weeks before he was told they were shutting down. So he quit his job. He moved all the way across the country, got a place, and now he has no job. And he's in an unfamiliar city and all that. So that's that's sad. But hopefully um, hopefully this has a better resolution for most people anyway. Yeah, it, it was it was good to hear that the other video game community came out and said, "Hey, all you people who lost your jobs, we are open. We need people to come and help." And we don't know how that turned out. Hopefully, a lot of people landed on their feet. Um, but yeah, that sucked dude, when a lot of people heard heard about that. Um, and I think we had a discussion, uh, kind of about this. Like, right. what does that do for adventure games in the future? Because right now, personally for me, Capcom is the only company with Phoenix Wright. Okay. You know, that's kind of the only adventure game that is, that, that's very popular. It's, it's niche, but people know that it, the, it has good story writing. Um, it has great comedic bits, but a lot of the gameplay is from a adventure game. Right. You know? Yeah. Adventure games are have gone through, and I, go, I know you guys touched on this a couple episodes ago, mm-hmm. and maybe even just last episode. Um, adventure games gone through a big transitional period. You know, when they were on, in the 90s on PC, they were huge. And all the point-and-click adventure games with the mouse and just the text type and all that, even Zork going farther back. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I played all those games. You know, and I had a old IBM and all that, and I played all those games. And then they just went away. And they're not really ever come back the way they were. Yeah, you had, you know, Thimbleweed Park that came out just recently. And you have yes. a few of the other games. But it's just not in it's just not what people want nowadays. And they're not they don't sell very well. Or some of them like one will sell well, but they're not like a Metroidvania, for example. You're not gonna get millions and millions of copies sold on them. So this is kind of, I'm sure Telltale, there's going to be a whole story about this and it's going to come out later and it's going to be this big, we're going to hear a lot of things we didn't even have any clue about, I'm sure. Yes. So uh, I, I would say that it's probably, going, it's probably one of the biggest stories of 2018. Um, once we gather all the news and stuff and by, by like the second week of December, because a lot of media and news outlet go out you know they got Christmas break for like two weeks and stuff. Right. But we'll see like what the biggest stories were this year. A lot of them happened at E3. Um, there's a lot of Nintendo ones, but like this one is kind of like major, major. Um, yeah, this one's major. I think probably because it just like slapped a lot of people in the face. Yes. Like we didn't have any really. I mean, we kind of. I think a lot of people had an idea they weren't selling that well, but they just didn't know until all of a sudden they're just not there anymore. Exactly. So we're going to move on. We got two great stories by Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft announces cloud based gaming service X Cloud. Um, and Josh, can you talk a little bit about this? Yeah, basically, um, Microsoft started developing their cloud based gaming service similar to PS Now or other services that we have in the past on live, things like that. They've started uh, basically, they're, it's done. 
They said that they can actually ramp a game. They have Blade set up in server farms. It's in a beta type testing period. They have the Xbox One architecture set up. Mm -hmm. So they can actually stream a game to any device that you own. You can stream with using an Xbox controller because it's Bluetooth. So if you want it on a PC, you can play it on a PC. If you want it on your phone, you can play it on your phone. You just have to have an internet connection, obviously, and you're able to stream. So their their goal with this is just another option for players. Uh, not really aimed at the hardcore players, but it is because it gives you an option. If you are waiting in line for something, or if you're at the airport and you want to play your Xbox One game or Xbox game, you can just turn it on on your phone and play it. If you don't have a controller with you, you can use your the touchpad to play. So... I think the if there's a video on it on YouTube, if you search it, you'll find it. It's just Microsoft Project X Cloud, and they really talk about how they just want to open game or gaming to everybody, and that there's going to be two billion gamers on the planet, and they want to be able to offer them any game they want to play. Like if you've never played a Halo game, they want to say, "Here, open your phone up, play Halo." So it's it's a really interesting concept, and it's going to be beta testing next year. I wonder, is it games that's on Windows 10, or is it going to be coming through Game Pass? Like another thing well, from Game Pass. Well, they showed, in the video, the games that they showed running on it were Forza 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forza Horizon 4. And um, I believe that was the only actual game that they showed running on it. Oh, they showed Halo as well. I think it was Halo 5. Multiplayer. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know if, you know, what's a, how they're running that now. I'm sure they're on a closed network, and it's really... You know, it's it's in beta, so it's it's not done, it's not ready by any means. Okay. But it will be interesting because I will. I kind of wonder that, uh, like, if you buy a game digitally through your Xbox or through your PC, is that streaming function? Is X Cloud in the future going to be part of that? Like, it's like it's automatically guaranteed. Like, you have it on your hard drive. But you also have it in the cloud. So when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, you know, it saved my game to the cloud. So I can right. just tap it on, play it, and it, it, you know, it knows my achievements. It knows my, uh, my place that's in the game. And I could just continue from there. Um, I, th- I think that's how it is. Cause that's how it is with Xbox Play Anywhere now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've tried that, but like, if I play on my PC and I play, like, say, example, I want to play Forza on my PC. If I turn that on, it'll pick up right where I left off on my Xbox One. Yeah, and I, so, and, and that's and that's why I wonder is it because uh, those games say like PC gonna save to your hard drive and Xbox One right. is gonna save save to the hard drive. So it kind of knows where a place to save it at. It has something where it's where it's where it's at. Where X Cloud because it's streaming, it's not saved anywhere. Um, I see what you're saying. You mean the actual game is not yeah, saved anywhere. But it yeah. no, but it somehow knows your data and it can right. just put you where you was at. So when you get done playing that, hey, you got done playing and see it in your, I see this in the cloud save. So I'm going to automatically save it to your Xbox and to your PC. Right. I think what it is is that because you have to have an internet connection for it to mm-hmm. even work, it's obviously going to check your cloud save. Yes. And it's going to say, okay, where is that? We're going to update that get you to where you are but the majority the the real interesting part of this is that they already have these servers up and running at some point somewhere at some point somewhere in the country or out of the country they have these servers up and running so they're ready to scale so it's going to be really interesting to see how fast they can actually do this and like sony has done this with ps now um, and, and it really wasn't well received as as well as I think they wanted. Yeah. And I think it may be just a little bit too early. So people weren't really comfortable with it. But it's going to be interesting to see how this actually gets adopted by gamers. Yes. So uh, we're going to move on to the next story. Uh, Microsoft reportedly close to acquiring Obsidian as an Xbox developer. Uh, reports are circulating that Microsoft is very close to obtaining video game developer studio Obsidian Entertainment. Obsidian has been independent has been an independent studio since it was founded in 2003. The developer is primarily known for its RPG games and have quite a few big titles under their belt, including fan favorite and acclaimed titles such as Fallout New Vegas. Now, 
rest of the Obi public too, and more most recently Pillars of Eternity. And they did say that they don't respond or comment on rumors. Um, Absolutely. I don't think X. I don't think Microsoft is going to buy them. I don't really. I, I don't think Obsidian doesn't fit in Microsoft's wheelhouse of game. Okay. I think um, personally, I think that Microsoft would be would really want to try to get Obsidian. They need a really good RPG um, developer, and that's what this developer does. And they've been really close basically close to cash flow problems for years now so i think that they're ripe for somebody to take not really take over them but for somebody to say here you have unlimited cash you have a, you have a budget go make the game you want to make but everybody's going to be like okay y'all need to make fable and it's not going to get made and people are going to be upset but who knows? Maybe the next fable is already being in de- development by somebody else, and we don't know. And, and you know, there's rumors I, on that too. I and I think the two new companies that they created, uh, when and I forgot their names on, uh, I think Compensate or something like that. Uh, I have to watch E3 again. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, I think one of those developers are making fable because I'm just like, what would they do with Obsidian? And are they? It, is Obsidian well enough to tell a single player RPG game? That's yeah. kind of that's kind of traditional, you know, on the level right. of like, like what are what new thing are they going to bring to the Microsoft crowd? Because you got to realize that even though Obsidian is a great developer, they got some good titles. They are a Western RPG developer. How do you sell that to the Eastern market? Where Square Enix, uh, pretty much has a hold on it. And even Nintendo has a hold on the RPG market there. You know, no, I, I, I agree with you, Eddie. I totally agree. I think that this would be an acquisition really to bolster, um, their PC RPG lineup. Yes. Now, it wouldn't be so much for console. They're not going after the Eastern, you know, the Japanese RPGs. Mm-hmm. They're not going after, you know, Dragon Quest. They're not going after those. They know that they can't. I don't. I don't think that they have a developer that can develop an RPG on that level. Yes. At least it would appeal to the Eastern game, you know, Eastern gamers. But if they can get something that, like Pillars of Eternity, would become their IP at this point, and it, they could develop a sequel to it, or just keep developing for this IP. It would be interesting. I, I just don't know. We'll is, see. Is Pillars of Eternity like a Diablo style game? Yes, I, I believe it is. I, I haven't played it. I saw it being played a few times, but I haven't played it. Because I know that that would grab the Chinese market. And definitely right. with with Game Pass and definitely with it will work now, it will work well with S Cloud if they are doing this. If they do attain it. Um I just think that there's something about Microsoft and uh, and uh, Atena Obsidian. It's just that you got to find the right project for them, while making sure that fans of PC and of PlayStation um, of Obsidian is going to make these games that it doesn't piss them off and be like this is unfair because people are going to feel like okay Microsoft is pretty much buying up all these companies now it's going to feel like a monopoly somewhat over these video over the video game developers but if these developers are not making money they're going to make that business decision to go for Microsoft because it's more reliable you know right and I get that and that's why a lot of I think some of these companies are doing this you know um I mean in Microsoft doesn't have a problem if the company f- are you know going over budget and everything look at Lionhead they shut them down earlier this year mm-hmm. they didn't have a problem with it uh, I mean I'm sure that everybody hates you know people being laid off and things like that but I they really do need these companies they only have a, when you look at it they only really have five companies if this if they get this one five or six that are making games and on a two to three year cycle of making games we're talking about they're making games for their next platform Yes. Uh, it wouldn't be for Xbox One at this point. It wouldn't even be for, uh, you know, PC right now. We're we're talking about two to three years out for everything, because they're just they have to ramp up. They have to get every the staff. They have to figure out what they're going to do. So this is just one of those things that's you know it's it's literally a rumor, and it's supposed to be like 
close to done, but it's not done. Right. So we'll we'll see what how this actually fleshes out. But it, I think it would be a good idea I, if they could acquire it. If if they do acquire them, um, I think it's the EXO twenty eighteen conference or something. I wouldn't announce it there. I would literally go and announce it at E3 of 2019. Right. Cause because then they could show something, what they're doing. They can show like exactly. a teaser or saying, Hey, we got them working on this next generation RPG. Yes. Or they're, they're deciding to do this, and, you know? Th- and they could hit stuff with Xbox inside. You know, if Microsoft is going to be taken and, and they should like, Hey, we got a sweet, we got a secret project going on Xbox inside. We can't tell you who the developer is, but we're going to just highlight some things. We're going to tease you, bring that same teaser to E3 and then it'll be like, bam, developed by Obsidian and then announce that they acquire Obsidian. Like people at Obsidian definitely have to shut their mouth. Because if right. anyone if anyone talk, there's gonna be a problem. Like you literally have to shut your mouth and not say anything. Make everybody sign the NDA. Or something. Right, and I mean, I know that these companies, these people are signing NDAs, and they're breaking them when they're leaking this. Because you know, this is not a sanctioned thing to do. I at one point I had worked for Microsoft as a, on a contract, mm-hmm. and I had to sign an NDA, and I was extremely worried that when they sent me software that my wife would get it and open it up and start looking at it and and breaking my NDA. So I I took it really seriously. And that was back in the 90s when it was, like for me, it was a serious thing to do. Because I knew if I broke it and I got caught breaking it, I wouldn't be working anywhere else in the industry ever. So that was was a, a thing for me. So I know that these people that are leaking this, they're thinking like this too. And I don't know why they're leaking this, just maybe they just think it's it's no big deal you know or a lot of people know about it but we'll see in the coming weeks i mean it'll be interesting to see how the story unfolds if if it even unfolds at all it might just go away yeah nothing much has been said about it but i'm interested to see i just microsoft if they do acquire them it has to be the right time it has to be the right title and it 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 got to feel like such it's got to be on a nintendo announcement you know it's got to be like it's so big that this is all that we talk about because when we do nintendo when we do do nintendo directs and they just literally like me and my friend Corey, we was like we fell all of our seats when they announced that yeah uh nintendo's getting doom they're also getting wolf of star too we was just like wait what (laughs) like right like that through everybody off and that's the kind of level microsoft needs to be no i agree i totally agree uh they need to ramp up and they need to take their obviously they're taking their first party development more a lot more seriously yes. so when they're starting to starting to develop you know acquire developers not even building their own although they are building their own as well they're just buying them because they have the money to do so yeah. So it, it's it's they it's going to be interesting. Like I said, to see how this unfolds, we'll see if even Obs- you know Obsidian might not even really be around. They might have to ramp up again. I don't even know what they're doing right now. They might not be doing anything. I think they're probably working on Pillars of Return. So like yeah, they're stuff. probably yeah they're doing yeah support for that. But that's it that doesn't take nearly uh, you know two hundred and fifty developers that it would take to develop like a AAA game, for example. Yes. Cool. And the Microsoft, if you do acquire them, we won't cross play. Support Nintendo. <laughs> Put your games on Nintendo. <laughs> Get it together, Nintendo. So let's start, let's do some Microsoft games on there. We've been talking, me and my friend Corey, we've been talking about Cuphead on Switch. That would be awesome. Oh. Now with the streaming service, if they do that, could you imagine streaming Cuphead to your um, iPhone? You know, you mm-hmm. could stream it right to your iPhone and play it with a controller while you're yeah. sitting on the bus. It would and, be awesome. And if shoot, if Microsoft offered the, the S Cloud thing to Nintendo and Nintendo takes it, it's a done deal. I mean, right. I know everybody's saying that you know they they don't want a universified universal si- uh, system and stuff, but I'm just like Microsoft and Nintendo are, are willing to work together. Hey, to they're make- buddies now. They got Minecraft. They've got you know, right. If 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 it if the money is good, they're gonna do it. Right. It's and a I, business. And I know Reggie said that they don't think about their competition. And Nintendo doesn't. 
You, you no. know, we can see Nintendo has been doing their own thing since the week. They were just like, you know, we're not even going to compete with anybody. We're going to innovate and let that roll. Their innovation has paid off, whether you like it or not. Their innovation has paid off. Right. Nintendo is a whole different company. Um, they've been, they do something different. They've been doing something different since, literally since uh, right after the Super Nintendo. Yeah. They were going, you know, they were going one to one with everybody, and but they stuck with cartridges. Then they go to they go to the Nintendo sixty four. They went to Virtual Boy first, we should say. Then they went to the Nintendo sixty four in the same year, pretty much. Yeah. They just they they go after a niche market. They go after you know they have the best IP on the planet. You know everybody loves Mario, F Zelda. I mean, how can you not love that stuff? Right. So you know, they know they know what they're doing. Yes. So we're going to get into our last story. Uh, Nintendo planning a Switch revision in 2019. Um, everybody kind of like know. Uh, already heard about this rumor. Um, nothing has been said or anything. Um, but they said the new screen is supposed to be similar to the new iPhone. Um, they will make this will make it thinner and have a better battery life. Uh, I don't think this is going to happen. Um, they if they do do it, they're going to try to do it with a new chip because of the hacking thing. But I don't see Nintendo revising a system that only came out within uh, within a year. Like, okay, so. Do you think the hacking thing is that big of a deal to Nintendo? Nope. I, I don't think so, because I don't think that a lot of people are hacking their Switches. Right. I honestly and, don't think. Not right now, anyway. And because Nintendo somehow, some some of their software or something, recognizes that the game, that the system been hacked, it has a brick them. And they can't play any right. game, they can't update any games or play them and stuff. So Nintendo's kind of been smart working things around there. I feel like Nintendo is working on their new DS system or handheld, I should say. Um, I don't think they're going back to the Game Boy uh, line just yet. I think they're ready to create a new line after the DS. Uh, I'm probably call it something else. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, I I feel like personally for me that they're probably make uh, they're probably take something from the Wii U and make it smaller. And do some real cool things with it. So it, so it'll be. I mean, what they learn from the Wii U, of course, help them make the Switch. But I think what they learn from the Wii U can also be done in a handheld. Um, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna look nice and sleek. Um, and, and their research and development team is probably just thinking of all this crazy stuff, thinking about chips, who they're going to go go with and stuff. I think they're working more on their handheld than they will be. They will work on their console on the Switch because you don't do a new version of a system that cast came out just in one year. Like even with Microsoft, it took about what, three or four years for Xbox Slim to come out or, or two years before Xbox Slim came out. And even with, uh, even with uh, PS4, that it took a while to come out. So yeah, uh, yeah, with Microsoft doing like the slim, like probably about two years after the Xbox One, um, and then PS4 doing it with their slim um, and the Pro. I think probably about three years later. When this is, because I think the Pro came out. I think the slim and the Pro came out a year after um, Xbox. I'm assuming. Yeah, um, you're talking about Xbox. Xbox you're talking about one. the Xbox Xbox One with yeah. like, yeah, it was a f- it was a few years. Yeah, because it was 2013. Was it 2013 or 2014? I think but, it was 2013 when the when they when they launched. Yeah, and I think so. Like, it 20, was 2014 or tw- when they when they came, came out with the revision. Yeah, 2016 when they came out with revision. Yeah, cause I th- can I can only see Nintendo doing this for one reason, um, and that's. They're worried that when the new consoles get announced for Microsoft and mm-hmm. Sony, and probably 2019, they may get announced. They, I, I don't think so. They'll probably wait till 2020. Yeah. But when they get announced, that the Switch is going to look a lot older than it is right now. And it's going to have trouble porting things to the Switch because of its power. I, they may increase power on the Switch. I, I think the, the thing about it is that... Uh, Power and graphics in this, in a sense, for the Switch doesn't matter. 
Right. It's the uh, it's just having the ability of playing these games on the go because Skyrim so, um, Doom so, like a lot of people are show are telling developers that hey, even if you got all of these all of this power, you're still running games at thirty frames per second. We gotta make a choice of with what. If we're gonna play at 4K, it's gotta be at 30. If we wanna be at 60, it's gotta be at 1080. So we're not, they're not, still not getting true power. We're getting checkerboard or upscale and stuff. And so, I don't think that stuff matters to a lot of gamers. Maybe if you own the equipment, yeah, or the TV for that, yeah, it would look good. Um, I think Switch is just like, you know, we got these interesting games that you guys could play. And if you appreciate the art style, because these are a lot of indie developers, helping them, per, helping them buy these games would make them want to make better games and be able to afford tools to make games look really good. Because definitely if you, if you look at just this year alone, it's definitely been, uh, third party versus indie versus Nintendo. Right. And and in a sense that and I'm sorry I had to say this but indie's been winning Nintendo has been coming in second and third party has been coming in and kind of in third. Microsoft and Sony first party have been to me good but not the best. Okay. Good, Good in the sense that they come out, they get the talk, and then nothing. And then they're gone. And then they're gone. Where's so you mean get... like 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 uh, Horizon and God of War that they're not being talked about right now, right? Really, for even I mean, people aren't even really talking about them for you know like God of War. I'm not really even hearing Game of the Year discussions for them anymore. Right. But I still I still hear Game of the Year discussions for a lot of other titles. Right. You know, from Nintendo and from indie developers. Like, so we still getting sale numbers from the legend of zelda from canada and right. we're st- and people are still showing stuff off of that so it's just and even mario party stuff it's just like people are showing pictures that okay i brought this game now to give it a chance and people are just still talking about that in the sense that nintendo is still producing great quality of titles and stuff whether you like it or not um you know with you know fortnite um Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, Octopath Traveler, you know, Octopath Traveler being a big one where they've been having problems of trying to make copies and keep them in the store. And, and here is PS4 with Dragon Quest uh, 11 and people are not, people are saying they're having, they had a good time with it, but it's not getting the kind of recognition or talk that it deserves. Like even Mega Man 11, it came out, people are enjoying it and then, but the talk is not there I, I think probably red dead would be the next game that right. probably be talked for call of duty blackouts but it's just like it's still nintendo getting that love and any games on the nintendo system is getting that recognition and love um where you know where st- people are still playing dead cells and talking about it over something that some third party third party would do not saying that third party didn't didn't deliver this year because I believe they 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 did, but when it comes to conversation and being in the consumer and gamer base eye, a lot of things have been indie related or Nintendo related. With third okay. party following in that in that last place. Yeah, you're right. Nintendo really did hit it out of the park. I mean, when when they launched the Switch, they obviously had you know Breath of the Wild at launch, which and then you get you get Mario in the same year. I mean, that's unheard of. I don't even remember. I don't think there has even been a Nintendo console that launched with both Mario and Zelda in the first year. Right. And those you know, games... And so, oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and those games... You know, and those games were... I mean, Zelda was a game-changing game for a lot of people. I mean, I, I've put in over 300 hours into Zelda, and I still haven't beat it. So... I refuse to go to go fight Ganon because I know once I do, I'm going to be done with it and I won't ever go back to it. So, I mean, that's one of the things that they do. They do have a great gaming system. I just think that if they do do this, Mm -hmm. the only real I mean, they might do it for a couple of reasons. It would be because of when the new systems get announced, this is going to look the switch right now is going to look a lot older. Yes. It's going to be harder to get the ports for the games that are coming out for them because like right now obviously they can port wolfenstein 2 which is 
astronomical. It's fantastic. I, I didn't even, when I saw a video of that running on the Switch, I couldn't believe it was actually running on the Switch. Um, but maybe in a year or two, they won't be able to do that. So that, that in my opinion, that's why they might consider revisioning a little more powerful machine. Also, when you dock the machine, they may actually be able to make it so it has a better resolution on your TV. Yes. Instead of 720p, they might be able to do a true 1080, 60 frames per second on everything. That might be the only other reason. But I agree with you. Like, Nintendo doesn't have to play one-to-one with these other guys. They never have. Right. So, I mean, they have their own They have their own way they do things, and they're making plenty of money. Yeah, the Wii U is a misstep. A lot of it was because I think the Wii U is just kind of ahead of its time. You couldn't take it with you. You couldn't. You could take that tablet with you, but you could only go, like, 25 feet from your console. You know, you couldn't take it with you and go to work and come back. It was, it was a new way of playing games, and it was a challenge for it. To me, it was a challenge to third party of of trying to innovate. You know, right. it was they they loved the safety net, but that safety net really wasn't there because like I said in other podcasts and for a while that you could sell a million on a with a million with third party gays and it they would still close that developer because it didn't do good and a lot of a lot of western third party developers were doing that you know compared right. to where i think i think the eastern you know like the, like the japanese developers they got hip to what nintendo was doing and so i think with definitely if they do, if Nintendo do decide to do a new Switch, I don't think there will still be a lot of Western depart- parties going there. But if Bethesda continues to lead the trail on that system, that's guaranteed money for Bethesda. It's guaranteed money for all the Eastern developers, and it's guaranteed money for all the any developers. Because every, because like for me personally, only thing that only people who really missing out that could really make some money is Activision and EA but in every and there are limited people who care about their games you know even Ubisoft is making money off of them that Mario and plus rabbits that everybody laughed at that was a banger out the street that's when, a great game <laughs> and when the, when the developer of XCOM is sitting down on telling them, like I got to play the game and I was even wild about it like and it's still making money that's yeah, the, that game that, is actually a great game. That, yeah. like, that's the crazy thing, and people are still talking about, about that game. And you're right, and everything, and they're putting everything to the Switch. Yes. So, I mean, like, Dead Cells is available on all the consoles, and the only one I ever hear anybody talking about is a Switch version. You know, and, and the same with Hollow Knight. I only, it's available on the other consoles now, too. I never hear anybody talking about it. It is coming out physical uh, early 2019. I think it's, like, in March. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that will, I think you'll get more of a talk about it on the Switch at that point because it'll be coming out physically. Yes. But, and I also think, I mean, it's coming out physically for the PS4 and Xbox One as well, but I don't think anybody really cares. They have enough to play. They have Red Dead 2, you know? And there are, people are going to be playing that for years. I mean, look at GTA 5. It's number one hot, on the selling, you know, on, on the NDA and, you know, all and, the way up to this point, and and we and, and, yeah, yeah. and I had a discussion about that. The only reason why they're up on those numbers because it's on five different platforms. It's still well, yeah, I, absolutely. And it's just like Minecraft. That's why it sells everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, everywhere. it's on your phone. It's on your iPad. It's on everything. Yeah. So I mean, but yeah, you're right. If it's just a one game that comes on on one system, it's exclusive. It is going to be difficult. So that. So yeah, Nintendo doesn't need to do this by any means. But it would be interesting if they did. And this was reported by the Wall Street Journal and a few other places, Den of Geek. They just took the Wall Street Journal um, because if you wanted to read the original Wall Street Journal yeah. uh, article, it was actually behind a paywall. So they took the original article and copied it pretty much and just quoted it so you can read it without having to pay for it. So if anybody wants to do that, they can definitely do that. Um, but it is an, it's an interesting take and it's just a it's – a, it's literally a rumor and we'll see. Yes. But everybody, that's going to be World One One podcast. Um, if you guys did hear Larry, uh, he did jo- join us uh, for a bit. Um, he has to actually go back and rest up. Um, and Dylan wasn't able to make the episode due to a family emergency. So you know, send him some good thoughts and everything. Uh, but Josh, thank you. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed your first episode. I did. I did. 
Uh, I hope you enjoy talking to me. Oh, of course. <laughs> We're on the same way, <laughs> I know. We're having a good discussion. Uh, you guys can find more of World One One Podcast at shoutengine.com. You guys can follow us on Twitter at world one underscore one. Also, you can email the show at world one one podcast at gmail.com. Want to know what you guys think about, um, Nintendo making a new system or make a revision, I should say, uh, Microsoft by us obsidian x cloud uh are you going to be changing your psn name multiple times are you going to be spending that money or <laughs> you got your actual name <laughs> ready to go we want to know all about this and like i said you can email us at world one one podcast at gmail.com everybody have a great week have a great weekend and we'll see you next time on world one one podcast oh but before we go uh josh is there anything that you'd like to plug that we can follow you at um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter um, at Lagru, which is my last name. It's L A G R E W. That's probably going to be the best way to get a hold of me if you're just trying to get a hold of me off the street. Uh, I'm on Facebook and stuff like that, but I probably won't respond to you if you, I don't know who you are. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me at Twitter, it's probably the best way. And you guys could join us at the NVC Book Club, also on Facebook. If you guys are up to playing some old video Nintendo games. Um, and maybe something that she missed. Come join us there. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at that retro code. Um, and all my other work is at ngrradio.com. With that, everybody, have a great week and have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time on World One Podcast. Bye, everybody.